um, a human resource management specialist. Specifically, my area of specialization is payroll fraud prevention. In other words, I'm a consultant payroll fraud prevention specialist. We use scientific means to stop, to identify, stop payroll fraud. And um, more often than not, what we do aside from payroll fraud prevention is to completely re-engineer most payrolls for states, esteemed organizations who may need our services from time to time, government, ministries, department agencies and higher states. terms and in my own um, perception. Um, more often than not you find that ghost workers may mean this um, syndrome whereby people are being paid, fictitious names are being put on salaries, um, payroll lists. Um, you could also have people who have died whose salaries have continued. You can also have um, people who have been um, seriously accelerated that is accelerated progression. There's so many things, you know, that when they say, oh, ghost workers, it's rolled into that word. But however, uh, from my own antecedents and what I found out, I've been able to discover that more often than not, the problem, yes, ghost workers persist and they are present. The most important problem, majority of the times, is not the ghost workers alone, but a deliberate placement of certain categories of staff on higher salary skills than what they merit. Let me give you an example. In the civil service in Nigeria, at the federal level, the government at one point or the other decided that a certain category of people, they listed them by virtue of what they do, for instance the medical uh, personnel and maybe the health workers and all, university lecturers, that is academic stuff, that they should get certain, you know, the remunerations to reward them for their job description or their personal specification or the kind of thing they do daily and their, their task. So you would have, for instance, something like um, consolidated health salary skill, yeah. that is CONHES, yeah. consolidated, consolidated health salary skill is applicable only to pharmacists, nurses, and laboratory scientists. Hmm. Now, having taken these three, let me give you an example. Okay, ma'am. For the nurses, in the nursing department, there are different cadres. There is a nursing assistant. Hmm. There are some nursing technicians. Hmm. There are some nursing um, uh, administrators. There are also nurses who are registered nurses and registered midwives. The only persons for whom consolidated health salary skills would apply in the nursing cadre are the nurses themselves. The nurses themselves. Just the nurses, not the nursing assistant, not the auxiliary nurse, not the cleaners. Not. But you find out that what occurs is when they want to do a payroll fraud, they you know apply the consolidated health salary system, the CONES, that's what we call it, board. They, they apply it across board. And that way, a nursing assistant that is meant to be on grade level, maybe grade level three or four or five, that is meant to earn maybe 19 to 20,000, may then be put on 210, 220, because there's a huge world of difference between grade level and consolidated health, and cons any consolidated salary, for instance. Grade level five, maybe 20, 22,000, 
Okay, consolidated health salaries, the corn has four or five, we're looking at 200, 300, 350,000. Hmm. So, but that person, for one person, person, the beauty of it is that person doesn't get that amount. What they do is this you see, in payroll, we have what we call pay schedule and pay vouchers. Now, the pay schedule is when you print out the payroll. This person, Saad at Bakre grade level 15, 150,000. This person, your name, yeah. 120,000. Now, it's a big document that a governor would get every month. How many governors, for instance, look at that? No. The only thing they look at is a summary page. The summary page will tell you total for ministries, total for departments, and then lump it all together. And the governor signs. Once they sign, that is the pay schedule. It's a list of workers, their dis dispensation, and their amount. Whatever wrongs they've done there, once it's signed, it is accepted. So everything is embedded in the... So, once they say, okay, the whole salary now is 3.7 billion. Mm. When they put 3.7 billion, that's on the schedule. Mm. It's approved. That amount is approved. Mm. Now, they will now go back to their ministries, department, agencies, and prostitutes. The accounts department, they will, now pre they will now start to prepare what they call voucher, pay voucher. This one is a pay schedule. The difference being, pay schedule is what is approved, pay voucher is what actuals, the actual thing that goes out to That is the manifestation of the approval. Now, when they get back to the pay voucher, that person on grade level 5, who is an auxiliary nurse, for whom Con Hess was approved for 250. They just give out the 25,000 on a pay voucher Jesus. and then the remaining 225, they call this thing mop-ups. And now when you apply that across board, maybe about 17, 18,000 salaries are affected. The same thing in the university. What we have in the university is consolidated, um, uh, harmonized tertiary institution salary scale, that is HATIS. Then COMTIS, consolidated tertiary institution salary scale. The consolidated tertiary institution salary scale is for those people who are at the helms of affairs of institutions like monotechnics, polytechnics, colleges of education, and universities. Maybe the vice chancellor, the deputy vice chancellors, admin and academic, registrar, and other key people, they will be on the con, uh, contest. Now, the HATIS will be specifically for academic staff who are teaching staff. Now in a university, you have a cleaner, you have drivers, you have admin people. They are meant to be on grade level. However, they apply it all across board and you know how many people work in a university. So you see the deliberate placement of certain categories of individual on salary skills that they're not meant to be on. So that at the end of the day, those people get their actual amount. They don't know how much they've used their name to collect. They don't know if Sada at Bakri or Tuna in level 5 officer, they put 250. It's just one of those things that happen. So you see, yes, we have issues of people haven't been, um, you know, um, people haven't died and their salaries go on. Let's give an example. Maybe um, somebody on grade level 15 or 16 dies, 150,000. Rather than stop that salary, what they will do is what they call replacement. Jesus. Sometimes, maybe a grade level five person dies. They may ask the son or the daughter to come and be replaced, which is a bad thing. They call it replacement. It's flagrantly, you know, practiced. It is ubiquitous, ubiquitous everywhere. But this is wrong. It's not supposed to be. So that the letter of appointment will read Malam Sheu Musa. Born 1947. Yes, sir. But the person who comes up when I say I want to see Malam Sheh Musa, that person comes with that letter of appointment, boy, is a 27 year old man. And I'm asking, there's a huge discrepancy between who is sat in front of me. And we go, oh, my father don't die. Then, and then we go and come go ministry. They come bed there. They come tell us, they make we bring some money, then they go put me. Because my father now the, now the breadwinner. You see, all these things don't work. Hmm. For the particular job your father was doing, there had to be a job description yeah. and a person specification. Your father met, I want you to assume your father was a good match. There shouldn't be any way, under normal circumstances, others should be recruited. Not an automatic replacement. That's one. Sometimes you find that a high-ranking person dies. Maybe the salary is about 200,000. Rather than, you know, 
stop the salary, what they do is they will recruit maybe people that will collect 20, 20,000, 10 of those. So that that salary is still within 200,000 and it continues. Also, when a person is meant to retire, that person submits a letter to any of the ministries, department, agencies of our state house to inform them and notify them who gets paid in lieu, some months in lieu of retirement. By the time that end of that period for which he or she has been paid a curse, his pension ordinarily should have been kick-started. However, mm. when you write those letters, you find that they don't get their maybe three months in lieu and then they don't get their pension, but their salary continues. Mm. Somebody somewhere is pocketing the salaries. What then occurs? When that happens two, three, four times, others will see that this man wrote a letter. His salary stopped. You know, he's notifying government of his, maybe he's age 60 or 35 years in service, whichever one, or 65 years old. Yeah. He's met the, um, he's gotten to a point where he has to retire. Then what then occurs is, rather than, you know, getting what he's supposed to get, his letter just stops his salary. Hmm. So who wants to then go to any ministry department agency to say, look, it's time for me to retire. Then you find that there are retirees still working, falsely reducing their age, ages, they are falsifying their ages because nobody wants to die in abject poverty. Because most of those people who had written before them died in abject poverty. Nothing came. Eventually. They just wrote and then the salary is being, you know, and that old man or woman continually waits for that salary till they die. Jesus. These are some of the things you have and these are the three things that the trained eyes like ours would easily catch. extent that when I see somebody who is of a low cadre and you sat, you're sat in front of me and I say to you during a fiscal verification exercise, can I see your letter of appointment? I'm able to see if it was 1947 Malam Musa or maybe that person is in front of me, fine, that's aside, I'm able to ask, your salary is 425,000, what are you? Are you a veterinary doctor? I can tell easily this is a cleaner and then he's come with that kind of salary. And then you start to find out. So you see, it's a falsification of you know, the amount. Yeah. The real problem is not the ghost workers per se. Yes, they exist. Yeah. They're also a problem on their own. But the real issues we have is a deliberate placement of certain categories of staff who ordinarily should not be on salary skills, higher salary skills, on those high salary skills, to be able to you know, pump up the payroll figure and then distort everything. Mm. And then they start to say their governor didn't pay this. Their governor didn't pay that. Now, in 2009, when I did Kogi State, for instance, yeah. the Kogi State government was receiving between 3 to 3.5 billion, 3.7 billion every month from FAC allocation. It undulates. However, they were claiming before I got there, they were collecting 1.5, 1.6 billion mm. from the governor. The governor never knew how many people he had. The salary this month is 1.4 billion, next month 1.5 billion. By the time I finished the audit, we discovered that the salary was only a little over 840 million. Jesus. So now, if you look at the discrepancy between 840 million and 1.6, 1.7, 1.9 billion, then you find that there are some months you it would hold a salary would the, the, the figure would hold at a particular amount. Let's assume it's 1.8. 5.2 billion. March 1.852 billion. April 1.852 billion. May 1.852 billion. If you are a payroll analyst like I am, the first thing that should strike you is no payroll figure is the same. It's meant to be a varied figure. Because every month you have people who, are, who would retire, people who would have left, people who would have died, people who would have been promoted, people who would have, you know, um, transferred in service or out of service. So all these things are variants and indices that would normally affect a payroll figure. Where you not down? You never have one, one particular figure. I remember when I, before I went to Niger State, His Excellency the Governor, I watched him on one program whereby he said that he got in, when do these politicians get in? You know, I'm not into politics, so I don't know. Uh, when they get sworn in, I uh, think yes. it's, uh, is it April or May? May, 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 May 29. So when he got in May, 29. May, between May and October, before the man screamed, that was happening. 
He had a particular figure. I hope you're talking about the Governor Moaz No. Okay. I'm talking about Governor um, Abubakar Sani Bello. Okay, ma. Governor Sani Bello said the figure held at the same figure, inclusive, in fact, to the nearest couple he was holding for about five, six, seven months. Until one day he had to ask the PAMSEC finance then that. Come, PAMSEC. People know they go. <laughs> People know they die. <laughs> People know they retire. People know they get, you know, and anybody who's been to school. I mean, the governor read economics. He's well educated. Anybody will think, ah, why is it? It's not a house of five staff where I know that it's sixty thousand for fifty thousand for ten for for five individuals yeah. at ten thousand naira each per month. It is a, 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 a state of about thirty-two to thirty-five thousand staff. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's um, it's a state of 32 to 35,000 people, some of whom will transfer to local government, some local government staff will transfer to state government, some people would have died, some people would have left, some people would have retired. Hmm. It must vary every month. Of course. You can have uh, uh, 2 billion, 352 million, 500,000 and 15 couple. Constant. Oh, consistently. For, for, for six, seven months until the, the, the young yes, man had to say, ah, ah. Like the houses would say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> you know? Let me give you next, another easy example. An easy oh, example. Oh, you Allah. <laughs> so, another easy example is this. Hmm. You have, I told you about consolidated health salary. Yes, um, ma'am. Um, now, there's CONMED, Consolidated Medical Salary Scale. It's for doctors and dentists. Now, on their pay schedule, you would have things like maybe call duty allowances. A call duty allowance is, you know, every month each person would, would have gone on a call. That amount is only meant to be paid to you only if you had been called. If you had gone on the call. The fact that your name came out on a call duty roster doesn't mean you get called. There are some people who are second level call, third level, you know, on call. They're not, I mean, normal doctors that have just maybe graduated with uh, a few years of experience will be the ones first, you know, first call. Then those ones who are consultants, maybe third call. Yeah. The fact remains that the governor went, Governor um, Abubakar went at 1 a.m. or maybe after 1 a.m. one day to the medical, one of the medical institutions they had, maybe General Hospital Mina. And the young man just walked in and found out that. They asked which doctors were around, there were, only one, there were only one or two. And I'm told that on that day, the people who were meant to be on the call duty, that were, their names on the call duty roster were over eight. But they will get paid. There were only two people on ground. Only those two qualified to have been, got, to have been given money for that call duty of that day. But all of them would get. All of them would get. There were even some permanent secretaries then who, for instance, there were some five who were doctors. They now crossed over. Ordinarily, doctors are the medical cadre. The most you'll get consolidated is maybe you are a director or maybe executive secretary of a board, or maybe you are the managing director of a, a medical institution or the CMD, chief medical director. Those ones, the equivalent to that medical cadre. It, on the administrative side are permanent secretaries. Yeah. Now these five somehow found their ways to be permanent secretaries. They have crossed over from medical to to um, admin. Yes, it's unusual, but it's usually at the discretion yeah. of the executive governor. So, I think Governor Mahazu Babangida was the one who allowed that to happen. Yeah. Now, what they have done is this. You see, when you have such crossovers, there are two ways to it. You have a salary from where you're coming from. Yeah. You're coming to earn another salary by virtue of your new position yep. that you're coming to assume. Yep. What the law dictates is you are to earn the greater of the two. Wonderful. You're not to earn the two together. Yeah. Now these people combined these two together <sighs> and they were earning almost one million every month <sighs> well, while their governor earned a little bit over half a million. One single person. Yes, one single person. <laughs> there were five super pound sex. And I brought, the gov I brought it to the notice of the governor that, Your Excellency, this shouldn't work. The most they would have done was to earn the higher of the two salaries and the emoluments of the present 
position they're coming to occupy. 15% only of the total emoluments, not the basic salary. And that is supposed to be subject to the discretionary powers of the executive governor. But they just added maybe about 650,000 they were earning as consultant, medical consultant, with the 415,000 there about as a permanent secretary. And they joined it together. And five of them would earn up, up to a million every month. And they had done it for about 68, 68 months there about. 68 months, my lord. 68 months. And if you do that every month, this is five million. Every month, every year is 60 million for this five. Whereas, whereas only half of it should there about a little bit yep. over half of it. So in other words, 30 million fraud every year for the past five or six years. My Lord Jesus Christ. That's 30 million. And some of them had even, you know, they had gone ahead to have been chief medical directors already <laughs> from the health sector before coming to assume the position. It's like you finish being a commission, uh, being a governor, and then you assume the role of another governorship thing and co collect all the emoluments and that was what was happening you know and it, you know it just goes on and on in the in the in the lab for instance yes ma the laboratory you have three cadres hmm. you just see laboratories there are three cadres of people there the lab assistant that's the one that takes the, the blood sample the lab technician is the one that runs the test and then the lab scientist is the one that interprets the test hmm. and writes a report on the test in these three cadres of people, only the lab scientist is allowed or entitled to earn consolidated health salary scale. However, you find that when they take the pay scale to the government, they have not only put the lab scientist, but they've put the lab technician and they've put the lab um, attendant. And the attendant will never know that it's 22,500 he's meant to earn. They approved, they used his name to approve more than 300,000. He just gets his 22. And some of the times, too, they can tell those people to, instead of your 22, you'll be seeing 40 every month. Hmm. Hmm. The remaining, this is, this is you, 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 you withdraw and you and know, return it back to the system. And, you hmm. know, at a point we felt that most executive governors felt that, you know, before I got to Kogi State, they were paying people table payment. Okay. As in, there was, no get, there was no automated uh, yes, they scale. Get, they get this uh, schedule approved, they then go back to their ministries, department agencies, and parish state house and draw a voucher of the actual going out. There was a lady, Ketura. Ketura's, you know, I just saw her sound her in. What do you do? She still had the broom, she was holding there, she was a cleaner. Her salary was 24500 And I was looking in front of me, you know, she came for fiscal verification. When I asked people to come for fiscal verification, I want to match your job description to your person's specification and your qualifications. I also want to match your salary to that person sat in front of me. Oh, this is 650. I'm looking at this person can only be a consultant, medical person. And then in comes in somebody holding a roof. And I'm like, okay, what is going on now? And then Ketura was like, I said to Ketura, how much is your salary? She said to something thousand. To be sure, I didn't say anything to her. I said to her, the, 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 um, the security people attached to me should follow her. I told her to calm down because, you know, generally people have this perception that ah, I'm going to see the consultant. And I say to people, you don't need to be afraid of any consultant if you're clean. Yeah. Yep. I sit down and ah, there was a particular boy that came in one day and said to me, Madam, I want you. You know, they killed. It was time to work. I work with 102 people. So it was meant to go when it was the turn of the queue to go to one of my staff. He said, no, I want the madam to scream me. I smiled. This guy is my friend till today. Hmm. However, hmm. you know, she sat there and I said, how much did you She said 20,000. I needed to be sure to know where I was coming from. Hmm. I said the security operative should take her in one of the official cars to go to the bank and make a printout of her salary. Jesus. For the past seven, or uh, no, for the past three, four years, she hadn't been promoted anyway. So she had the same amount of that 20,000 something. Oh. But it was one. 88,000 on the pay schedule One, that the governor is presented with. 188,000. Like but when the pay voucher comes, what occurs is she gets her 20,000. She was getting the 20,000 until they started to you know, pay electronically and she sees it in her bank at 20,000. She was pleasantly surprised when I said to her that, well, your name has been used to collect 188,000. She's like, Ori Mio. I'm like, no, no, don't be faced. Then we got the 
um, accounts, you know, most account, most of these accounts officers, yeah. once they've been too long on a particular position in a particular ministry or department or agency, they, 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 they become, become sars unto themselves. Yes. So they know how to manipulate. Yeah. You know? That's why more often than not, I would always recommend that once the person has been somewhere for four to six months, they move him. Yeah. If that person is yeah. an accounts person, yeah. so that way. We're able to keep it, you know, locked down and simple. So she realized that this is how much. And that person, when you know he was roughing top of it, he had to start to name people. It was a crazy thing, but when you go online and you you Google 2009 Kogi State Civil Service Audit, you will see. that there are these people that are called agricultural extension workers. Now, the agri person in the agri ministry, the only people who are meant to earn med um, consolidated health workers' salary skill are those people who are posted out to rural areas. They earn only rural area allowance and also maybe um, veterinary doctors hmm. because they are doctors, although they are vets. However, in the veterinary department, there are veterinary doctors, there are veterinary technicians, veterinary assistants, and, you know, these people who go around um, uh, a Greek information officer. Yeah. But then a guy comes into my office and says to me, Madam Consultant, this is my salary. I've been collecting 325000 uh -huh. This time they gave me uh, 42750 I said, what do you do? I said, it's an a Greek extension worker. I said, how does... You are meant to be on grade level what? I looked at this uh, pay because the pay will carry you know, your grade level or maybe your salary skill. And I realized that he was put on consolidated health salary skill. And I asked him, under what circumstance were you put on consolidated? What do you think is special about your job? He said he goes into the field and I said you're a grade level worker. That's why I must, my, you know, it was the third or the fourth month that I had started working in Niger State. So, the salary had passed through what we call, you know, our normal verifications and we had streamlined it back to what it ought to be. He came to meet me and I said to him, if I'm to do the right thing, you are, to, you are supposed to return all the amount. That means at 40 something thousand, 42 thousand something, you've been collecting 350 something. Mm -hmm. If we remove that 310 something for the past six years, and you see they don't promote them, they stay on that level Well, they're earning. He, on that note, will probably at that 350, maybe instead of 40,000, 70 comes to him. And then the remaining 200 and something is not there. These are the things we see. I've seen people who maybe a, a, a teacher, an English teacher, and I said to her, You are an English teacher? Yes. Uh, what is your name? Banaji um, Turenchi. What do you do? English. English. And I'm, what is it now? We're live on Sunday, but others I don't know. So you see, more often than not, yes, they're ghost workers. Yes, so people English teacher that cannot spell English. But I can tell you, but I can in In so many places you find that. You see, there were, there were these policies too. Hmm. The policies to a large extent too, aimed, I mean, aided and abetted corruption. These corrupt practices, sharp practices in payroll. Give an instance, there used to be a time when we had grade level one. They've now, there's no more grade level one. They start from two. Between two and six, there was this law that allowed ministries, department, agencies, and parastatals to, within themselves, recruit people between grade levels two and six without recourse to the civil service commission of that state. More often than not, when I get to a state, the first thing I do is I stop that. Hmm. Do not recruit, there's an embargo on recruitment. You just find that a, a, a civil servant who is a chief in his village every weekend will go back to his village with 20 letters of appointment <laughs> and bring people in, yes, and bring people onto the civil service without recourse to how much of a bloat it would cost to the original figure because they had that opportunity to recruit between grade levels one and, and five, sometimes six depending on the, on the state. So you see, and then it goes on and on. But only trained eyes will see this. Yeah. Most people that call themselves, yes, I know in this 
um, in this field of art, yes, a lot of people who call themselves a consultant auditor tell everybody that knows what is up. Most people go there looking for ghost workers. There may not even be that many ghost workers. In, in Niger State, for instance, I found that when I said bring your nominal role, a nominal role is a document that consists of the most important information about every individual that works in a, in a state, minus the political appointees who would have their own from time to time by, by virtue of the fact that they are appointed. Talking about civil servants. Yes, only civil servants. However, when I found the one for Niger State, the first thing that shocked me was I saw people born 1928, the same age <coughs> as my dad. Today, my dad is 90 years old this year. You know, and this was 2015, December. So I asked, I asked the deputy governor then, I said, sir, is there a law here that negates people who have reached their threshold with regards to you know, retirement in the civil service from being sent off? They said, no, but um, there's this thing about gardeners, um, cooks in schools, you know, in children's schools, the cooks, the gardeners, and the um, one other kata. I can't remember that. I think it was the security men, yep. the gardeners, and the cooks, hmm. that they are not to retire until they die in service. So I asked, is there a law that says able-bodied men and women should not replace people who are old? old? This is an 88-year-old man. This is the one that would open the door set for the thieves as a guard. Hmm. And they would even keep the things they've stolen with him because yes. the guy is gone, he's out of it. Yes, you cannot even take it. So even I take said, it. we had to, they said because there was a circular. I said, circulars are just notifications. Yes. They're things that, you know, they carry information yep. from the top to the bottom, the bottom to the top. So I said, what we'll do, there is a circular on the ground, yes. What the government needed to do was the governor had to issue another circular to stop that this existing one. By the time we looked at it, 1,444 people. 1,444 people. Total salary about 300 million. Ha -ha. That's a savings on its own. Immediate look. Ha -ha. Looking at their, pay, uh, their nominal role, you find this person, you know, in 2016, I had people on the nominal role who were born 1932. 1928, 1949, 1947. If you look at 1940, for, for, how many years? That is almost 40 to 2000 is 60 years. 60 years. And um, they are still 2016 is 70, uh, 76. And they are still in service. When they actually have left at 60. If you are a high court judge, it's 65. Yes. I mean, sorry, is it? Uh, if you are a high court yeah. judge, it's um, uh, 70. At if you're, if you're if you're a university um, done, then it's 65. 65. And then the mega is a university done. No. So, so those are things. So a trained mm. eye will look for such things. Uh, You're not looking for the ghost worker per se. In, in, in Niger State, I asked them to give me a list of people who had been employed since 2000 and 2004. And then they told me that there was an embargo on recruitment. Mm between 2004 and 2009. Now, I went straight to the nominal role to look at the years of employment of people and to segregate those who came in within that period. Hmm. The salient question to ask is this. Yes, ma'am. If there had been an embargo, total embargo on recruitment within this period, how come within this period we found 9,516 people had entered the payroll fresh? So these are things that are plaguing governors right now. You see, as a governor presently, that you're you're unable to pay your yes. pay your workers. I pity them. Hmm. Look at Governor Arabeshola. How much is he being paid? You know, the fact allocation comes. You have told the governor you are 7 million naira or 6.9 billion every month. Okay, the governor receives 4 to 5 billion every month. He's been having to loan money. He has not found somebody who is, you know, Who's active bold. enough and, and you know, enough. courageous enough and knows what they're doing to be able to address that issue. You see, when most governors have the right people do their audit Good. and streamline their payroll, Good. completely re you know, I would 
come in, I would look at your nominal role, I would look at, you know, a fiscal, I'll do a fiscal verification of all staff. Good. Thereafter, I would streamline the payroll to reflect, reflect the result of the fiscal verification, and then we'll do a complete re-engineering, and then we'll keep it locked down. And then I put in place a foolproof, fraud-proof, payroll administration system. It's an electronic administration automated. system. Automated. It's automated. It will promote when workers are due. It will retire when they are due and, and remove their, their, their amount to, you know, the value to zero. And it will be manned by somebody who is neutral. Wonderful. Not somebody who is from the civil service oh. that any PAMSEC or any or whatever can bo bo bamboozle yep. and is reporting directly to the governor. And this person cannot, you know, log on in the morning and the system says, good morning, super admin. What would you like to do? You want to add new samples? It will tell you, give me, get authorization from the governor, and then we would leave it in such a way that we wired the whole place up to the governor's table. Mm. And there's a computer attached to a printer at the governor's table, so that whatever the super admin is doing, the governor can see on his laptop, lap, on his on his system. System. So when the super admin logs on and says that the system says, "Good morning, Sadat Bakri Noto," assuming I'm the super admin, what would you like to do today? And you say you. It gives you a drop down. You want to print payroll, you want to adjust or whatever. And then you pick from the drop down menu. You want to add people. It says on the governor's table instantly. What does that tell you? The governor has to be on ground and on, on seat for you to be able to add people. One. And then it shows, it says, I, 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 am, I, I am waiting for approval from the governor. We would have given the governor a secret code. If you put that code in and presses enter, it would give the man downstairs in the payroll room that the governor's um, consent, the governor's approval um, has come in. Hmm. Then it will ask the governor again how many people. If the governor says two zero, enter. It will okay. say to you approval to put 20 new staff. Hmm. Now that has to be backed by a memo, which you would have, you know, hard copy. But then it allows you at that point to put the names, put the grade levels, scan all these um, documents to support the grade level onto the system. However, try to put the 21st person. It would keep telling the governor. It gives real-time um, report. Hmm. Your Excellency, Super Admin is trying to add the 21st person. And this so, 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 and so time. And it will not allow you hmm. to add that person. Hmm. The same thing if you want to promote you open the, the um, system and it asks you this morning, good morning, what do you want to do? You want to adjust bed levels. Or oh, it's time for promotion. Every morning it shows you, good morning, these 15 people are due for promotion, these ones are due for retirement and all. Now, it will tell you, put your input and then let it go ahead. A person going from grade level 5 to 6, if you try to put him from 5 to 7, it returns that person to 6, but it captures a report which it sends to the governor's table. So, you are being watched. It's Mon kind of a big brother thing. Monitored. Monitoring is 24 hours. You can't do anything except the governor overrides. You don't know his, his uh, sign-in word. You don't know his um, uh, code. password. You don't know the code. So we keep, we keep these things. We've done all the stress of a fiscal verification. We have done it complete re-engineering. Then we use that to keep it locked down, locked in. So that way we've been able to identify fraud, stop it, and prevent further fraud. This is what most governors need. But you see, to do that, you need to do this once and for all. Don't be biased. I tell governors that I work with, please don't send people to me with notes. I won't honor it. What is good for the ghost is good for the ganda. If you're stopping a couple of people for doing certain things, I cannot exempt others. I'm not like that. If you know you can't be that, I can't work for you. The few people who know me, and a lot of people who have worked with me, chief executives, heads of organizations, will tell you, this is my mantra. What is good for the ghost is good for the government, so that I can have a free mind. It's not easy when you have to, in Kogi State, we had to stop 17,522 people. <laughs> These are people with children and all that. The economy is what has driven them. But I don't believe in that. I believe you could be a farmer and earn daily whatever. Yeah. Okay, however, the economy and the system is such that if you were to be a farmer in England or you want to be a farmer, you have an opportunity to go to an agricultural bank, mm. loan money, they assist you to set up. We don't have those things here. Yes, of course. And then people will resort to fraud mm. because they need to feed their families. Mm. So governors too must, you know, tighten their rope, get the full audit done. There's a difference between an audit and a headcount. A headcount here is how many of us are here? One, yes. two, three, four, 
0.4.4. Okay, let all of them do biometrics, add it onto the system. No, an audit will seek to ask salient questions. How many of us are there? Four. Were four people invited? Are there supposed to be four there? Okay, what was the, the prerequisite for being admitted into this room? Okay, there are meant to be three reporters and the person to come and interview. Those three people there, are they the reporters or the imposters? These are salient questions. How much is the three of them or four of them, what is the cost of the damage yep. to our pockets? Yep. These are salient questions that audits seek to, 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 to address and to ask. The answers to which would make an organization better hmm. if it's done properly. So suddenly, the governor that is collecting 4.5 billion that is looking for 2 point something billion to add to it to make the total amount of what they say is supposed to be, suddenly finds out that that, that 6.9 billion is no more than 2.9 billion. Hmm. So he's making a savings, he's making a savings of 4 billion every month. So this four billion, the governor starts to do the balls he's meant to do in this local government, improve this um, hospital here. He's, he's, you know, he's building schools over there. He's building more dispensaries. They're able to, you know, finance people to do small scale farming and stuff like that, yeah. buy fertilizers and stuff. But if this is not happening, and the governor is held prisoner by fictitious figures, <laughs> brought in by and fictitious people, by fictitious people who are in accounts. Yes. And people who are usually there are people around them yes. whom they in whom they, they have placed a lot of civil servants. When you when you have those issues. Every day I, I learn from, from the news of what is happening in Kogi State. The young man came when I left Kogi State I left a salary of a little over 840 million in 2009 and are taking into consideration all the salary skills and the minimum wage there. Now, between that period and now, I'm told there shouldn't have been any recruitment because I suggested and recommended strictly we shouldn't have any recruitment. Now, if there hasn't been a recruitment between 2009 and 2018 and they are telling the man is paying 3.7 billion, where did the 2.9 billion surface from. What kind of recruitment drive would you have done that would have made you to take on, you know, if you look at 840 that I left there, yeah. there about, and 3.7, then you find out that it's about times five. Yes. That means the people on ground you recruited times five, five more people. people. When did that happen? For small, you stayed How did you, did you ever hear of any mass recruitment no. drive? No. No. Those are silly questions. So what would you say the what that is in prison? What that guy is imprisoned by those figures, hmm. and then they are complaining he has is, he went to build a house, he went to open a house. His own private life will continue, hmm. but the fact is he's got a headache being your governor hmm. because he's unable to meet the target. The target he are saying he's paying three point four to three point seven billion, and the man, you know, we know what oil prices are yes. saying right now, and maybe the time. In 2009, maybe the governor was collecting between three to four billion every month yep. from FAC allocation, mm. and now that allocation maybe is two, down to two or maybe 2.5. If it's 2.5 and you're presenting a bill of 3.7 for salaries, what is it running? A local government administration. No, 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 no. He is having to lend money. After a while, the government, the, the banks too will say they cannot lend money. Mm. You can't perpetually lend money. Mm. So more often than not, they will use money for capital projects to join to it and all. It means the governor can't do a thing. I mean, running the state so of the loss. What he and what he, what I expected he to do him to do, what he ought to do is to go back to the basics, get those people who had done well in the past, oh. get them to come and visit. For this state, I can solve their problems in three weeks without oh, even leaving my you, office. You can solve. I can solve problems. it because I know how much I left there. I still have the figures. I have all. I have to do is do a bit of tinkering here and there. Who joined between then and now? Who should have left from the and, and who should have retired from the time I left it till now? Who died? Let ministries, department agencies, and parish states submit a list of those who have died. And then I do my add and subtract hmm. the addition and subtraction, and I come up with something. And then we we'll put new servers. I'm told they set fire to the server room when I left. <laughs> <laughs> you know, set what, fire what's the meaning of that, really? Awesome. When, when that computer is information. unable to allow you to do, it's no shaking, you know, okay. it keeps it locked up yes. and you cannot destroy it. So you set fire to, <laughs> when you set fire to the information, the general impression is they go back to the base. Everybody who failed um, their 
physical verification and the screening back then yes. found their way back onto the system. The deputy governor then, under Wada, and that's came a, to me, and your mayor Woli. And your actor, your mayor Woli. Yes, like, the actor came to me in my office once. He was worried about yeah, this inter thing. You yeah, know, I interviewed him sometime. And um, I said to him, sir, let's, let me give you a little example. I have a list of those who have failed on this computer. Sir, can you give me a copy of the current, um, pay, um, current um, staff list? And I put it on, I just opened one. And I said, sir, I'll open it on this computer. So I opened the staff list on, a, on the current staff list he brought on a yeah. computer. And I opened my own computer with those, a list of those people who had failed back then. I picked one person at random that had failed then. I typed his name for, him, for me to find on the new current. He was there. <laughs> I picked six others. All of them were there. The man was like, oh my <laughs> God. I said, sir, it seems everybody who failed the screening in 2009 are back. In service, How in active that? service, in active good service. And that service. is why huh. this is still happening. No, because no. if Sada Bakrin also failed in 2009, Nine. and they brought a list in 2012 13 mm. of current staffers, and I'm able to find Sada Bakrin Otto's name on the current, current list of staff, what happened? Mm. And six others. At random, I even told him, sir, scroll down. I put the computer in front of him, scroll down, sir, pick one. I said, are you doing magic? I said, no, sir, pick one. He picked one name. I said, sir, do control F, find, on this list of people that are the current workers that you brought. Put that name there and tell the computer to find it. When the computer brought it, he was like, hmm. he was deeply touched. But you see, that thing, the situation left on the, I mean, it, it was left. On the weather? Yes. On the Captain Wada's yes, regime? it was left like that, unattended. Hmm. And, on a and, and, the, and, the, and the payroll fraud continued on a bit. And today they have 3 point something billion. So you can help Yaya Bilo out of this lockdown? In three weeks. Now. In three weeks? Yes. Because the guy is crying now. And the guy in is three weeks. In three weeks. I don't know him personally. Okay. And it's not in my character to go looking for people. Hmm. But I think to a large extent there are people within Kogi State whom he can call and ask, who is this Sally Tibot woman that worked there? How can I get the number? And then call me and approach me. And I'll say to him, Your Excellency, I can help if you're willing. Hmm. And we'll tinker with it. Just give me a back office. Two, three weeks, we're done. We don't, I don't even need to do any fiscal verification. We'll bring you a list of your genuine staff, which we'll paste in every ministry, department, agency, and private sector. And your, if your name is not on this list, you better not show your face. Hmm. a reputable company. I'm not saying necessarily that we are the ones they should come to me, but I know that in this field, we are second to none. And all these bailouts they are giving states that are not getting to... When you give a state a bailout and there's fraud on the ground, when the salary is meant to be 2 billion and they, they are claiming they are paying 4.7 billion or 5 billion and you are giving them bailouts, are you not paying, are you not paying the the fraud, fraud stars. You are praying them. The first thing to do is to clean up your system. Good. To make it mandatory that every state, before they can access their bailout, let them be subjected to a proper audit, civil service audit, a proper physical verification. You see, at the state level, when you find one fraud, for every one fraud found at the state level, you have 20 at the local government level. I know a state with less than 7 million people that says that they have 38,000 civil servants at the state level. 38,000. 38, and another 35 at the local government level. So what is the ratio? 35,000. Everything in total about 80 something. Civil service can So that means every, every 1% or 10% of the people in the state are civil servants. What is happening? So you see, when a government says, when the central government says, yes, we are ready to assist you. Yes, we are ready to give validity measures. Yes, we are ready to give you bailouts. However, the bailout will only occur, you would access 
the bailout only when you've been able to submit a proper um, fiscal verification and screening report from a reputable, non-partisan, non-governmental company. For instance, how can a governor say he wants to do an audit and then he says the audit should be done by the uh, members of the trade union? A union, a union naturally is only interested in a high salary. You know why? Because the union dues that every worker pays to the union every month is 3% usually of their total basic salary. So if a basic salary is 2 billion, do you think the union would prefer a 2 billion basic salary to go down to 500,000? The lower it is, the lesser they get. The higher it is, the more they get. And they, want, they are interested in more, naturally. So what are we on about? So for then you now come and tell, you collect a job from a proper consultant to give to trade unions. That's, that, that's silly. That's, that's it. That's a bit silly. It means you jump from five pounds to fire. Yep. Something and then like the that. union worked for almost a year. They've not been able to produce. There was no single report. And the payroll that, at that time, the um, consultant auditor had left at 1.7 billion, went back to 2.3. Hmm. And that's what the union did. Hmm. And they wasted time and resources. Hmm. No receipts for all the money spent, nothing. Hmm. So, when the government at the center mandates, Yes, it's a federal system of government, but there are sometimes when the, gov the government, the presidency needs to put its foot down. Yep. Do a proper audit. All palliative measures subject to the report of, of fiscal verification that will be presented by that uh, company that has over, I mean, that has undertaken the fiscal verification or that has over, uh, undertaken the civil service verification of your state. So, for instance, if I did state A. Mm. And these are, I mean, this is the report I've gotten. It is mandatory for me to present to the presidency or maybe the Senate or whatever by myself. This is a presentation of what we have found there. So the total salary is this, 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 this. We are able to present, answer all the questions. And then that state government is able to access whatever palliative measures or uh, whatever it is the, the central government has given them. But you, that is not, in the absence of that, you are just sharing money. Hmm. That's how far it is. Because hmm. the money, at the end of the day, will still go to this fraudulent hands. Because hmm. that money is not 4.9 billion a month. It's only 2 billion. So when you release money for them to keep paying 4.9 billion, what are you doing? Hmm. You're aiding and abetting fraud. Hmm. And it's not helping matters.